There's something to be said when the person that ultimately determines your entire playing career, you know, your coach, looks at you and you're like, yeah, you're not good enough for X, Y, and Z. How are you gonna respond to that? You either gotta figure your shit out or crumple into the pressure so. What's up, y'all? Cody Allen back here, and I am bringing you the latest. I said latest and greatest last time we were a podcast. Um, this is the latest episode of the Fill the Gap podcast. I am your host, Cody Allen. That means I'm just the dude that's talking. What is a host really? I think a host is best used for when you have people on. And this episode is just me. But anyway, for those of you, for those of you that are watching the YouTube podcast, am I currently dressed as in I'm either at Coachella, um, Stagecoach, um, I forget the one in the Bay Area, Soul Blooms in Sac. Am I dressed like I'm going to a festival? You're damn right I am. And here. I mean, you can't. we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Anyway, uh, as you guys know, this podcast is sponsored by Cuts Clothing. Cuts Clothing, the best men's apparel game when it comes to anything in between the gym and going to a wedding. I've said that before. Maybe I should trademark it. I don't know. It's just the way that I best describe their clothes. But now you throw in the category of festival. They just launched a new festival collection. It has these dope-ass bucket hats. I'm not sure if I'm a bucket hat guy personally. Maybe. Uh, anyway, they have these bucket hats. Those are dope. They obviously dropped these shirts, the festival shorts. Um, they have these sleeveless shirts because you know Coachella be getting fucking hot out there. Everybody's sweating. Um, but use code the Cody Allen. You guys get discounted on all the products they have on their site. They're consistently dropping new stuff, but they're changing the game. So check them out. Cuts clothing. And obviously, I'm gonna wear the whole festival outfit for this because we're recording it pre after Coachella week one, before Coachella week two. We're rolling right in stagecoach. Um, but I digress a bit. Is this one of the most important podcasts that we're going to do to date? Yes. Am I dressed like this for this podcast? Hell yes. Why is this the most important podcast? Because the name of the podcast is fill the gap. I, about a year ago was approached by a mutual connection. His name's Corey camp. And he asked me, he was like, Hey, um, I'm putting together a project and we're going to write a book. I was like, okay, like not a big um, book guy myself, or at least I wasn't at the time. I wouldn't consider myself a big book guy, but um, I do think that I have a bunch of knowledge chopped up in this dumbass head of mine, hence why I have this podcast to even begin with, right? Um, I was like, what's the premise of the book? And it's about former athletes taking the lessons that they've learned through their trials and tribulations as an athlete and how they are equating them or utilizing those skills, that skill set, um, into making them strive for success in life. Um, and I was like, fuck it, man, I'm all about it. So why is this important? Because I'm officially a published author. So that's kind of dope because the book's out. I just got my copy. Um, I co-authored this along with a shit ton of other people. Um, I am chapter 12 and I'm actually really excited to read the rest of the chapters by the other authors because I played football, right? No two journeys are the same. All of these athletes um, come from different sports, different backgrounds. They had different success at different levels. And each person learned one thing that maybe I didn't learn because their story is different. And that's the same reason why the everyday person or even former athletes should read this book and read my chapter because there are things in my quote unquote journey that um, I learned that you maybe didn't. There's a reason why athletes become... Um, talk show host. There's a reason why Pat McAfee has such a massive following. Um, there's a reason why Brandon Marshall's been able to create I am athlete. There's a reason why fucking, um, Channing Crowder and them were able to do the pivot, Chad Johnson and company, Fred Taylor and Ryan Clark, because 
athletes have put themselves into very unique um, situations in their life. And it goes outside of the realm of just athletics, but we put an immense amount of pressure on ourselves and we're forced to perform in said pressure. And there's a lot of times that people, let's say pressure makes diamonds. There's a lot of times that people haven't put themselves in those positions because life just doesn't do that to you at a young age, especially with the way that things are now where everything's kind of catered to you. And it's like, you got to bend over backwards, not offend someone and whatever the hell it might be. Um, back when I played sports a billion years ago, it was like, there's something to be said when the person that ultimately determines your entire playing career, you do, but you know, your coach looks at you and you're like, yeah, you're not good enough for X, Y, and Z. How are you going to respond to that? A lot of people are like, you can't tell me that I'm not good at this and whatever. And it's like, that's not fair. And when you play sports, you either got to figure your shit out or crumple into the pressure. So this book is a culmination of a bunch of different athletes going through their trials and tribulations, what they learned, how they were able to overcome it. There's no one right way to do anything, but it's just our experiences. Like I said, I'm chapter 12, page 149. I will read everybody else's chapter. I will also have to recollect what the hell I even wrote. The page or the chapter is called Fill the Gap. It's only fitting, right? So it goes over my life growing up, um, the ups and downs that I've had, and how I've used my prowess and how I've used my experience as an athlete to become relatively successful, you know, to date in life. So anyway, this was my book announcement. I still haven't even put it on Instagram. It's not even on my website. Oh, where the fuck can you guys buy it? Um, we're going to put it on my site. Uh, exclusively, you can get it there. It's the Cody Allen.com. This definitely put, should go at the end of the podcast, but I won't bore you with it. Buy my book, buy my book, read it, review it. Let me know how you like it. Um, so today, I want to talk about something that my boy, I kind of came up with my boy. My boy's a coach now, and we played together in college, and we were talking about um, him being a coach and how you have to be diligent about the things that you say to young men, young women. He coaches football, so young men. Not to say that women can't play football, but you know what the fuck I'm talking about. Um the diligent about things you say to someone that you're coaching, that looks up to you, that's looking to you for guidance, but at the same time, you can't feed them lip service because you have to have those extremely hard conversations. These hard conversations are what are going to ultimately set you free and set them down the right path because if you don't have these conversations, you've got someone that's potentially, quote unquote, wasting their time um, playing for you, right? And... In today's NCAA, we'll do, or even the professional level, or even high school level, um, there comes a time in everybody's playing career where they have to make a decision, and that is, do I want to push harder to be better, or do I want to go another route in my life, Right. Most athletes are going to continue to push through that wall, push the barriers, push the boundaries, and they're going to say, how much better can I get so that I get more playing time, so that I'm more successful, that I win more games, so that I throw more touchdowns, whatever the hell it might be, swim faster mile, laps. Um, <clears throat> but sometimes, especially when you're young enough, sometimes the right choice is to divert down a path that's better for you. And if you're not getting proper guidance from those that you look up to, coaching staff, um, then you can just kind of meander down the wrong path for a long time rather than taking the advice of somebody that kind of has lived that, giving you their experience and without a, I don't, can't think of a better word, but kind of wasting time. The parallel to this in today's day and age and world and where most people are going to feel this is often in careers, in relationships um, where you, where one party or both parties or an outside party, um, know that for one reason or another, you're kind of wasting your time in this career, this relationship. I've got a friend who's in sales, right? And the dude is the nicest guy ever. He's 
so meticulous about so much shit that he does. I would have him do any sort of operations for any company that I've ever ran. Um, but when it comes to sales, he doesn't have what it takes. There is a particular type of person that it comes to sales that when it comes to sales, it's like this person's going to be successful. He's been in a particular job for like 10 years now trying to level up in the sales space, keeps getting passed up. And I'm like, dude, like if I was his boss, I'd be like, Hey man, like you are great at what you do. It's time for you to go a different route. Now that is an extremely hard conversation to have someone at, with someone as their boss, as their manager, because you see this person trying, you see this person wanting to and aspiring to be something else, be something that maybe isn't best suited to them. And you're kind of like, fuck man, like, do I want to be the one to tell them? Oftentimes what happens, um, we just let it go by the wayside, let it go by the wayside and we let them just continue down their path because as long as it doesn't affect me, I'm going to let them do their shit. You see this 10 times more often, probably in relationships, people that stay together for too long, even though they're both sides, one side, no sides, it doesn't matter. See that like, all right, cool. This isn't a good fit. You're kind of wasting your breath, wasting your time. And everybody always says that don't waste my time, right? It's like, well, a lot of times the reason why people quote unquote waste time is because they aren't comfortable having these uncomfortable conversations. These hard conversations are what are ultimately going to give you the keys and the answer to all the problems that you guys are having. If you're in a relationship, partnership, friendship, work relationship um, and one side or both sides sees that this is heading down the wrong path. And if you just kind of continue to brush it under the rug, brush it under the rug, brush it under the rug, you're going to get five years into this thing. You're going to be like, well, fuck man. Like I wish I would have known. There's so many people like, I wish I would have known. It's like you had every opportunity to know, but you chose not to have a conversation about any of this because it kind of scary. It kind of sucks sometimes. It's kind of like, oh, fuck, like, I don't want to know the answer. That happens so fucking often. People are afraid of what the actual answer is on what they should do. And so they figure if they just continue to kick the can down the road, then uh, things are going to be better off. And some people go sit behind the same desk at the same job and they work there for 40 years and they retire and they never really got to maximize their full potential because they didn't head down the path that was best for them. Some people get married, stay married for 60 years, and they just live a very average life in regards to happiness. They never really reach their full happiness because they are settling in a lot of ways. And it sucks to say, it's shitty to say, but these are the conversations that kind of need to be had if you want to maximize your full potential as a person, as a husband, as a wife, as a football player, as a soccer player, as a whatever the hell employee, fucking janitor, it doesn't matter. Um, eventually the person that is in control of your future outside of yourself and you need to have a hard conversation. And like we said before, so we, like I said before, sometimes that hard conversation is the fire under your ass that he says like, Hey, I need to do X, Y, and Z to make sure this works. Because if I want to go into sales and if I want to be a sales manager and if I want to own this fucking company at some point, yeah, it's going to be harder for me to do it because maybe I'm not best suited to do this. Maybe I'm going to have to give up some other things. Maybe I have to change my personality, whatever the hell it is. Um, the athlete mindset is going to tell you to push straight through that, um, which is also a fault of ours at times. Um, athletes don't like to give up. We have been so hardwired and programmed to thinking that We can overcome any, there is literally times in my life and definitely in my playing career where I'm like, it doesn't matter how bad I'm hurt. I'm going to have to be fucking dead to get pulled off this field. And athletes sometimes, I mean, we'll literally damn near kill ourselves out there on the field just for the opportunity at success. We will go down with this fucking ship 10 times out of 10. And unfortunately, I mean, depends on how you look at this. It could be a good or a bad thing. But sometimes, unfortunately, we carry that into our relationships. We don't know when to leave them. We carry that into our work, our careers. 
we don't know when to leave it. We carry that into a lot of things, our friendships. And sometimes it just takes so much fucking energy from you that by the end of it, you are dead. You are depleted. You don't have anything left in the tank. Um, And so that's a mindset shift that I think all athletes need to work on because sometimes you Sometimes you can't just outwork the issue. Sometimes you just can't say that no matter how hard I work, I'm going to be successful because most things in our playing career, your success was directly correlated to how successful or how hard you worked. Sorry. Um, I think I've said that before on this podcast, but it's about reprogramming the way that we think at times because I don't know. There's a lot that there's a lot that goes on in the head of like an athlete that <laughs> I remember I remember back when I played there was a a coach one of my favorite coaches ever Daniel Prado pretty sure he's at like Arkansas I know he's at USF now or USF but I'm pretty sure he's at Arkansas now I can't remember um anyway this dude and I'll finish with this we used to have this conditioning drill yeah, bless his heart. Best attitude always, no matter what. King of fake it till you make it. Um, and he took over. He's a receivers and special teams coach. Took over at doing conditioning when we needed him to one summer. And we used to have this drill where we'd run 16 110s, timed 110s, 110 yards. And uh, we'd run. He'd be like, how many reps? We'd be like, two. How many reps left? be like two we'd run five more be like how many reps left and we'd be like what does that even equal nine more and every single time just sporadically he'd be like no one more and we're like what the fuck are you talking about man and he would be like the only rep that you need to focus on is the next one and that's how hard you have to work to push through this next fucking rep we're all dead tired you know it's sacramento it's the heat in july who knows how hot it even is over over 100 degrees and then on the turf um but he was a guy that taught us that no matter how hard you work not no matter how hard you work the harder you work the better your outcome is going to be as a player and that was the case nine times out of ten when you played collegiate sports there's obviously nuance and variance and special situations but for the most part work harder more pt more success the whole deal right and he would take that into every single rep and i love him for it coach prado if you're listening to this um you made a very strong impact in my life positive impact in my life and i think that you did in a lot of people's lives Anyway, and continue to do so. Anyway, I got sentimental for a second. But uh, part of those hard conversations is that one time he brought me into his office and he's like, Cody, you are like pound for pound one of the most like fast people on the team, right? I'm not the fastest guy on the team, but I was big, fast linebacker. I was great for special teams. He's also a special teams coach, like I said. Um, but he's like, I need more from you. And he liked me. He liked me a lot. But he needed more from me if he wanted to play me more. And you get very complacent in a lot of things in life. And I think I got complacent at that moment in my life prior to that moment. And I was like, man, just because someone likes you, just because something's working doesn't mean that it couldn't be better. Right? And the last thing they ever want to do is let somebody down that has to sit down, look you in the face, and be like, hey, I need more from you. Um, So these hard conversations ultimately are going to set you, not set you free, but they're going to give you the keys to being the best version of yourself that you can be, being the best husband, being the best player, being the best employee, being the best employer, being the best brother, sister, whatever else you want me to say. Um, Having these conversations, rather than avoiding them, they will positively shift um, things in your life. So I urge you guys to have them. I urge you guys to continue to grow and develop and just expand on the things you've done so far in your life. So like I said, by the book forever athlete, 
my chapter is called fill the gap. Um, and you can find it on my website, the You guys can find anything that I have offering on my website, my social channels, the Cody Allen. So hope to hear from you more soon. And that's that.